There are, of course, no shortage of video compilations of Karen customer service freakouts, but in reality, the majority of customers are reasonable and respond well to businesses that prioritize the customer experience. Smart businesses understand that while demand for products or services may drop, the demand for customer service never does, and it's these companies that are likely to fare better than their competitors. Just ask Blockbuster, the dominant rental video giant who people generally have believed went out of business because of the emergence of Netflix. But that's not entirely true. We must remember that Netflix started off sending DVDs via snail mail, whereas Blockbuster had the upper hand due to offering the convenience of a physical location, yet customers still decided not to give Blockbuster their business. This is because Blockbuster had what is called a customer-hostile business model. Their demise is a direct result of customers feeling devalued and cheated by outrageous late fees. America West. Any airline can show you a movie, but you know what they really should show you? At America West, we respect your need to arrive on time. What you need. So fly America West and get something you don't always get on other airlines. Attention, passengers hold. U.S. Airways America the West is another cautionary tale. They went under after they slashed their customer service budget and outsourced customer support. As a result, the company mishandled or failed to address numerous complaints, angering customers to the point that no amount of cost cutting could make up for the fact that customers just didn't want to do business with the airline, eventually forcing it to file bankruptcy. Stellar customer service is widely acknowledged as an essential part of business, whether they are brick and mortar, e-commerce, business to business, or contracted services. Food delivery services blur the line between a few of these categories and are stellar in none. This may get a little ugly. Get ready for some brutal honesty, and let's dig our spork into it. The actual businesses get screwed. Restaurants are charged huge commissions for being on these platforms. In some cases, restaurants lose up to 30% of their sales directly to food delivery app commissions. Many city and state governments introduce commission caps to protect restaurant profits, only to be met with a lawsuit when DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Grubhub band it together to have the commission caps removed, citing that they are unconstitutional. Restaurants have attempted to recover some of these sales by charging the customer more for food items ordered by delivery apps. And while it may get them some exposure, in the end, for a lot of small businesses especially, who ideally could benefit most from a delivery service, say the hassle just isn't worth it. They deal with impatient drivers who grab partial orders or orders that are meant for another patron. The delivery app allows customers to order to closed restaurants. There's just so many variables outside the restaurant's control that lead the restaurant to receiving negative complaints and reviews attached to their brand. Variables that could easily be wiped away if the delivery companies value the customer experience. And after all of this, the restaurant staff prepares and packages the food but receives none of the tips. It's unreal that these apps still struggle with profitability after charging all these fees and underpaying their drivers. While customers who do complain are likely to focus their energy on the restaurant itself, there's others who take their feedback a step further. Customers are flocking to the Better Business Bureau platform to lodge their complaints. On the screen is a brief recording of my research into the BBB profile for DoorDash in particular, but I highly suggest taking a look for yourself. Many were highly entertaining. DoorDash appears to be issuing refunds left and right, and the complaints just continue to roll in, keeping profitability far out of reach. Notes being stapled to bags, chastising customers, and begging for reviews. I'm not talking about the tasteful notes that are short and sweet, simply thanking the customer. Some of these are even sold on Etsy and are quite cute. No, I'm actually talking about the cringe ones you read on Reddit, the awkward notes that attempt to hold the customer's feet to the fire instead of the food delivery apps themselves. It's odd and unexpected, in the worst way. There's nothing wrong with taking pride in your service and adding a personal touch, but sometimes the desired effect 
will backfire with the entitlement and condescending tone. Drivers who do this really only inspire more one-star reviews and probably scare customers away from using the delivery app altogether. That's if they even take the time to read it. I mean, sure, make it so that you and all the other drivers are fighting for as few customers as possible by turning people off from the platforms. I'm sure that will work out fine. Seven, some restaurants reduce the portion sizes when the customer is not in-house while still charging customers as normal. This creates loss of trust from the customer's end. This could also be due to fear of running out of ingredients due to the overflowing of orders they get from different food delivery apps at the same time and to offset the commission fees we touched on earlier. And it's not just to Chipotle. Of course, if a giant corporation like Chipotle is skimping, then you already know Other smaller restaurants with tighter budgets are as well. Number six, drivers have little to no support. DoorDash is notorious for this, so we'll focus primarily on them for this part of the video. And let me be clear, while there are bad apples in terms of delivery drivers, aka independent contractors, it's clear that there are a lot of influences that encourage and discourage the ultimate goal, top-notch customer service. This article from just earlier this month really broke it down completely and it all boils down to this. Drivers are unsupported. It has an effect on their morale and the performance of their job duties. The drivers pass the responsibility to boost this morale onto the customer while the customer is already paying nearly double and expecting to just receive consistently good customer service. The restaurant drivers and customers are all pointing to one another and nobody looks to the food delivery app themselves or holds them responsible to smooth out these issues. With that said, the next part is going to focus more on individual behaviors because the letters were really just the tip of the iceberg. Drivers calling it a luxury service, meanwhile drivers are parking in people's literal yards, refusing orders or holding food hostage, demanding larger tips for what will most likely be a cold meal after it has sat in your vehicle while you negotiate a bigger tip. That is a level of insanity and entitlement that I personally just do not understand. Some drivers treat tipping customers like a lick and it's gross. So, is this a luxury service or is that just a buzzword? Children are being used to deliver food. Is using your children to deliver food also part of this luxury experience? I can understand having your kid riding along because daycare is expensive, but them full on handling the pickup and delivery of food is unacceptable and unsafe. You don't know who is on the other side of that door they are walking up to. A woman in Blair County is speaking out against a DoorDash driver who allegedly stalked and threatened her after making a delivery. Our Colleen Knutson spoke exclusively with the victim and she joins us in studio with more details. Colleen? Matt and Amanda, the victim ordered through the DoorDash app about two weeks ago. The driver handed her the food, but it was leaking through the bag. The driver left, but just a few hours later, he showed up at her home unannounced, this time off the clock. I just knew something was off about him. After making a delivery to the home on September 4th, the DoorDash driver walked into the backyard of the home to give the victim a coupon after he said he ruined the victim's food when it spilled on his pants. The victim, who's asked to remain anonymous, says she declined, but he insisted. She then tried to get him to leave. I walked around the back to the front of the house, um, and he was in front of me, kept stopping and turning around and talking to me, and stopping and turning around. The driver, 53-year-old Robert Wales, left the home. But the following Wednesday, September 9th, there was a letter on the front door. The letter mentioned that he saw me on 17th Street and he wanted me to give him a call. She called him to say his actions were inappropriate and she was not interested, adding she was sorry if she gave him the wrong impression. And he said, no, you didn't give me any impression. I just thought you were really pretty. I'd like to take you out on a date. Well, like I said, I'm taken. I'm not available. Please don't contact me again. The next morning, she woke up to six missed calls and three voicemails from an unknown number, addressing her sister, whom Wales thinks called him instead of the victim. And I'm coming to your house tomorrow, and you better not 
either. As soon as I heard his voice, I knew it was him, and I started running through my house, making sure all the windows were locked, all the doors were locked. The victim called her sister and father, who then texted Wales to stop harassing his daughter. In the text messages, admitted that he stopped by on Labor Day that he saw me on 17th Street. They called police and based on the voicemails and the text messages, arrested Wales on Thursday the 10th for stalking and harassment. He posted his $15,000 bail. Somebody that's in that place mentally, I feel needs help. And I don't wanna see this man rot in jail forever. I wanna see him get the help that he needs. As for anyone else who finds themselves in a similar situation, the victim says, listen to your gut. If you feel like something's not right, it's probably not right. Go with it. And that's why I'm speaking out on the subject. DoorDash tells us Wales passed both a criminal and motor vehicle background check to become a driver. He has since been terminated. The company says they're working with local law enforcement on this investigation. In studio, I'm Colleen Knudsen. WTAJ News. Unhinged drivers knowing the address and personal information of customers and using their proximity to flirt with the customers is unprofessional and really that's an understatement at this point. It should be a no-brainer, but this happens more than people think. Number two, all of the hidden fees and increased costs of food. You know it's bad when you use a coupon and the total still ends up being double the cost of the food plus tip. CNET.com has done a really great article at the end of last year breaking down and comparing the fees across the three major delivery apps, DoorDash, Grubhub, and Uber Eats. It compares the cost of different categories, and I really do recommend checking it out. The results of a new study leave some unsettling food for thought. A surprising number of food delivery workers admit to sampling parts of customers' orders. Yep, CBS 2's Nina Kapoor explains. If you ever felt like a couple of fries or nuggets were missing from your order, you may be right. No, that's it. <laughs> you serious? That's nasty. A recent study conducted by the U.S. Foods Distributing Company found one in four delivery service couriers admit to munching on an order. And those are just the ones who admit it. Oh, my God, really? Yeah. Okay, that's scary. That's really gross. Wow. I had no idea. Almost 500 drivers from popular delivery apps, including Uber Eats, Grubhub, DoorDash, and Postmates were surveyed. Not only do so many drivers admit to sneaking a taste, but 21% of customers suspected it. More than half of the drivers surveyed say they've been tempted by the smell of the food they're delivering, but of that, only 28% actually dug in. I may have to tell them if you're that hungry, let me buy you a meal and you leave mine alone. While the study shocked many app users, one app courier was not surprised. I've seen just people grabbing, like if they was like, oh, what did I have fries? They'll grab a couple of fries off the top, take some, and then like, you know, kind of roll the bag up. People just, you know, don't know how to control that, that hunger. But Gonzalez says he would never. I've always considered, imagine this was me getting my food. Like, would I want somebody's dirty fingers where I don't know they've been, you know, touching the food that I'm supposed to be eating? The same study found that 85% of customers would like to see tamper evidence seals on the food to prevent drivers from digging in. We reached out to the apps named in the study with no response. In Hell's Kitchen, Nina Kapoor, CBS 2 News. And lastly, number one, drivers stealing food and groceries and otherwise tampering with food. I don't even think that people realize how often this happens to them. A 2022 poll of over 500 delivery drivers revealed that 79% of food delivery drivers admit to eating some of customers' food. Shout out to them for being honest, but that's an insane amount. 79% is crazy. Well, caught on camera, very disgusting delivery. A DoorDash driver apparently leaving something extra for a customer on their front porch. That man was seen spitting on the food. Local 10's Leanne Motohon spoke with a grossed out customer and is live with reaction. Y'all saw that clip. And one day they're going to steal the wrong person's food because these folks on my 600-pound life are not playing with y'all.
And while we do have food delivery apps still popping up, it doesn't mean the industry is winning any favor with the consumer base. People are getting more and more fed up with these delivery apps, all the puns intended. Where do you think that the future lies with these food delivery apps? And is there anything you would have added to the list? See you next time.